is Kaylee, and in this video I'm going to tell you all about the latest news surrounding a fossil of a Neanderthal child, which might actually be the earliest known evidence for the genetic condition of Down syndrome. This video is sponsored by Star Trek Fleet Command, but as always, more on the sponsor later in the video. So let me take you back to the point when the fossil was first discovered and take a quick look at the location. So it was 1989 and a group of archaeologists were excavating in a cave known as Cova Negra. I did not say a word that I'm not allowed to say. The word negra is Spanish for black. As I'm sure all you watching this will understand, I did not create the Spanish language. I'm just here to talk about this Neanderthal child and I can't help the fact that this cave is named this way. You know, take it up with the Spaniards or something. So as I was saying, a group of archaeologists were excavating at a cave site known as Cova Negra in Valencia, Spain in 1989. During the excavations they came across many bones, which have been researched and studied since they were discovered. These bones date from between 146,000 and 273,000 years ago. As you can imagine, which isn't hard to picture, back in 1989 the technology to study these bone fragments wasn't really great. But as our technology advances, we are able to study the bones and bone fragments that have been found in the past to try and uncover more information. And in this case, they hit the jackpot. Big time! But first, Let's listen to today's sponsor. Today we are diving into the depths of the universe like never before. You know me, I'm all about exploring history, but today we're taking a journey to the future. Let me tell you about Star Trek Fleet Command. Imagine a world where you're not just watching the stars, but you're exploring them. In this 4X MMO game, you're not just a player. You're a commander, forging alliances, battling enemies, and exploring the vastness of the Star Trek universe. What I personally love about Star Trek Fleet Command is the depth of the strategy it offers. From recruiting legendary characters like Captain Kirk and Spock, to commanding iconic ships like the USS Enterprise, every decision you make shapes your destiny among the stars. And the best part? You can play seamlessly on both your desktop and mobile, so the adventure never has to end, whether you're at home or on the go. Also, if you log in daily, you will receive special welcome gifts, including the epic Romulan officer Nero after just seven days. Nero boosts the damage of your weapons by 40% if the opponent's ship is burning at the beginning of each round. So don't forget to log in each day and get those special rewards. And for all you new players out there, use the promo code BOOST to unlock a beginner station upgrade content pack, packed with Latinum, Parsteel, Tritanium and more. Just head over to sdfcgift.com to redeem your code and set course for an epic journey through the cosmos. Install Star Trek Fleet Command now and immerse yourself in the Star Trek universe. Become the greatest commander in the galaxy and who knows, maybe we'll even cross paths among the stars. Don't forget to join an alliance and rise to the top of the leaderboard. And again, use promo code BOOST for exclusive rewards. So I think it's time we talk about the fossilized bone fragment that revealed this big news. The researchers took a CT scan of the bone and created a 3D computer model to analyze it. They determined the bone to be part from the side and base of the skull, including parts of the inner ear. They then determined that the bone belonged most likely to a Neanderthal child, around the age of six, based on how far the inner ear anatomy had developed. The bone, however, had a number of malformations. These malformations include an unusually wide ear canal, an unusual connection between one ear canal and neighboring chamber, and a small cochlea. The cochlea is a portion of the inner ear that looks like a snail shell. It's named after the Greek word for snail, cochlea. So when the researchers were done studying this particular bone, due to its malformations, the researchers then suggested that the child had Down syndrome. The five particular abnormalities found in this fossil fragment 
are consistent with Down syndrome, as they were able to rule out other syndromes because they did not find malformations or abnormalities that could suggest other syndromes. As you can imagine, not everyone agreed with their findings. Some other researchers are not convinced that the evidence is strong enough to say, without a doubt, that the child had Down syndrome. Some of these researchers told news outlets that the paper published about this Neanderthal child with Down syndrome is a bit more speculative than conclusive, that the team of researchers had very limited evidence, literally one tiny piece of bone from a skull. Usually, Down syndrome is diagnosed through genetic studies. They don't normally look at physical attributes of a fossil. But what the researchers all do agree upon is the fact that based on the analysis of the bone, the child would have suffered from at least severe hearing loss and a reduced sense of balance and vertigo. Which means that the child, who was most likely a little girl, needed to receive a high level of care to be able to survive for at least six years. Knowing that Neanderthal societies were usually highly mobile and didn't necessarily remain in one place very long, it's unlikely that the mother would have taken care of the child on her own. It would have to have been a societal effort. So it actually seems that the knowledge of the old African saying, it takes a village to raise a child, did not originate with us modern humans, but that this knowledge was already known and used in Neanderthal societies between 146,000 and 273,000 years ago. For a long time, it was thought that Neanderthals would only take care of people who were able and capable of returning the favor. But as you can imagine, this six-year-old Neanderthal girl was unable to do so. So her survival seems to be purely based on the selflessness of the adults around her. Which shows that Neanderthals were even more compassionate than we had thought up until now, that they were capable of displaying altruism. Discoveries like these show the incredible complexity of the Neanderthals, their intelligence, their selflessness, and it adds on to the debunking of the old, outdated idea that Neanderthals were dumb brutes. Because we know, they were not. I've covered that as a subject on my channel a few times now. Neanderthals were way more intelligent than we had previously thought in the decades before us. I'll be sure to keep an eye out for more possible information about this discovery in the future, and I'll have to add this in part in my Neanderthal documentary that I'm still working on almost a year later. Shh, I know, I know, I know, I'm working on it. Please, give me time. I want to make a real good documentary, not just a shit show, okay? Neanderthals are one of the most fascinating extinct human species in my personal opinion, and they were our close cousins. They were human. They were very similar to us, way more similar than researchers thought decades ago. New technologies, new discoveries, new fossil fragments, it all keeps expanding the knowledge and the picture that we have of the Neanderthals their cultures, their lifestyle, their burial rituals, and it all gives us more insight into them as a species. I think it's a shame that they're no longer roaming the earth with us, but thankfully they've never truly disappeared, as we, homo sapiens, you know, modern humans, if you will, uh, carry their DNA their Neanderthal DNA within our genomes. So in a way, their legacy lives on inside of us. So what do you think of this latest discovery? Let me know in the comments down below. Don't forget to download Star Trek Fleet Command and use promo code BOOST for exclusive rewards. Me being a big sci-fi fan, I'll probably see you in the game. If you enjoyed watching, then don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe if you'd like to see more of these kind of videos, and click that bell icon if you want to be notified whenever I upload. If you haven't seen my previous videos yet, then click the card in the upper right corner, or click one of the links in the description down below, or click a video in the end card. I also want to say, if you want to join me in Turkey in October, please do so. The link is also in the description down below. We're going to see Gobekli Tepe, Karahan Tepe, the Sunli Orifan Museum, Cappadocia, uh, Derinkuyu Underground City, Hatusa, Haran, Sokmatar. It's going to be incredible. I'm so excited. 
And yeah, I would like you to join me on this incredible adventure. So yeah, link in the description down below, book your spot. I would also like to say a massive thank you to my patrons and my channel members. Thank you so much for supporting me. It truly means the world to me. And for those that want to do a one-time or monthly fee for me, in, uh, and you don't want, you know, Patreon or YouTube taking a cut, go to historywithkaylee.live and you can do that. Uh, yeah, this was the video. I uh, am kind of really sort of back by this point, but I'm going to Malta on a plane on Tuesday and uh, you will see this on Sunday, probably. But yeah, July 2nd, I'm flying to Malta. Yes, I'm gonna be staying with Megalith Hunter again, Laura, she's my good friend. And we're gonna have a week of bliss. Yeah, simple as that. I just need one week of relaxation before I'm completely returning to YouTube filming and my normal hours in a work week. So yeah, see you in the next video. Bye.